Hello and welcome to one and all. So in this class, we'll continue with the impact of green revolution. Okay. So we have already finished how the agricultural productivity in the country increased because of green revolution. I mentioned isn't it by 1976, India became almost self-sufficient in food grades and the employment, the farmers could get the, the rural people could get the diversified employment opportunities because of the introduction of green revolution. And next, how the farmers income increased because of the entry of uh, the agricultural retail like Reliance Fresh, uh, Spencer's, etc. Because of the introduction of corporate or retail agricultural retailing in the country, the, there was a tremendous improvement in the incomes of the farmers. And the next uh, benefit of Green Revolution, the next impact of Green Revolution was the improvement in exports. So if you remember, once upon a time, India was an importer of food grains that uh, 1960s because of the severe economic crisis, we was uh, importing food grains from the other countries. And even before that also, uh, there was a 19, uh, late 1940s and all, there was a terrible uh, early 1940s, there were ter terrible famine in the country. So all during all those periods of time, we had to import food grains from the other country. So thanks to green revolution from being an importer of food grains india finally became the exporter of food grain so not only india became self sufficient in food grains india also started exporting food grains to other countries so india from being an importer of food grains so that was before green revolution before Green Revolution became an exporter of food grains after the introduction of Green Revolution. So if you want to check the data, the value of our agricultural exports increased from rupees 284 crores in 1960-61 to approximately 2.7 lakh crores by 2018-19 okay so these were all the favorable effects of green revolution on the indian agriculture but it is also not without any defects there were a couple of criticisms leveled against the green revolution also so let us check out what are all the criticisms leveled against green revolution so most of these criticisms were voiced by Professor C. H. Anumantarao. So Professor C. H. Anumantarao is Indian economist and writer. And he was, the, I mean, he, between 2004 and 2008, he was a member of the National Advisory Council. And he was in the technical committee uh, advising about the drought prone area program, desert development program, so we have seen, isn't it, the government has to introduce certain techniques to bring those areas also under cultivation I was mentioning to you. So he was one of the member of the technical committee advising the government regarding the draw, what are all the policies to be taken for drought prone area program, desert development program. And there are several other programs introduced by the uh, government in connection with agriculture. So he was an advisor of all those uh, programs by being a member of the National Advisory Council. So he voiced certain criticisms against green revolution so the first criticism leveled was one is green revolution will favor mechanization isn't it so unless mechanization because the uh, seeds were maturing very fast if it is manually done then uh, the effect is gone it, because it is going to take a long time whatever the processes involved in between so in every stages mechanization is required so because of this mechanization would, what will happen if the mechanization is introduced? So mechanization will, would lead to unemployment of farm labor. Of course, 
it is giving diversified employment opportunities that is no doubt about it but then on the whole uh, because of the introduction of mechanization there will be displacement of labor force leading to unemployment okay without mechanization green revolution will not work out okay then who can afford this mechanization is it possible for the small and marginal farmers so that is not it going to be possible only for the big farmers because it requires assured water supply irrigation facilities is a must so who can afford all that so it's only the big farmers could afford the new agricultural strategy so whatever the seeds for fertilizers mechanization whatever is involved in green revolution that new agricultural strategy, strategy that that is that would become possible only for the big farmers not the majority of so in, in our country we have seen that more than 85% comes under small and marginal farmers isn't it not the not by the majority of small and marginal farmers so what will happen and we are also having that landless laborers also there isn't it so what will uh, what happened here so this will widen the income inequalities already the income inequalities are existing in our country we have checked out isn't it so with the introduction of green revolution even in the agricultural sector also most it is happening in the other sectors so this will uh, in, increase i mean create the income inequalities even in the agricultural sector then the third uh, effect of criticism against green revolution was so green revolution did not favor all the crops and did not favor all the regions so it fa favored only certain crops and it favored only certain states or certain regions so green revolution benefited or it, it was confined only to certain states and certain crops so benefited only certain areas regions or you can call it as states especially punjab and haryana so because of this what it would create regional not only income inequalities it was also creating the regional disparities and when i mentioned punjab so which crop could benefit we all you can understand so benefited only mainly wheat wheat and rice so other crops so that's why there is a criticism against green revolution it's also called as wheat revolution critics call it as wheat revolution because it uh, wheat was the main crop that could benefit out of green revolution that's why punjab okay and it was criticized it could not benefit other crops so all the ignoring or other crops especially pulses could not benefit so this was a major defect in the sense that pulses are are the ones that could give protein so when we talk about uh, the poor, poorer sections of the population below poverty and the nutritional food in, food intake all those things we are talking about to uh, reduce the poverty in the country so when we when the pulses productivity and production is not increased from where the uh, majority of the sections of the people could get that nutritional food requirement isn't it so this is another uh, major defect of green revolution and finally green revolution requires application of all those fertilizers pesticides so the too much use of fertilizers pesticides what will happen the soil will lose its fertility and it will lead to lead to environmental would lead to the soil losing 
the fertility and also would lead to environmental degradation. So these were some of the criticisms leveled against green revolution. But anyway, there are two sides of the coin. So we, when you have certain advantages, we have to face certain disadvantages also. But no one can deny the fact that India could become self-sufficient in food grains mainly because of the green revolution. Okay. So, so that was the uh, technological reforms introduced in the country. So we have now seen starting with causes for low productivity in Indian agriculture. What are all the measures introduced by the government? So we have finished with the uh, two important measures undertaken by the government. One in the area of institutional reforms in the form of land reforms and another in the area of technological reforms like green revolution to improve the agricultural productivity. So it doesn't stop here. The farmers are facing so many other problems. And the next major problem what the farmers are facing is in getting finance for cultivation. So, so they are mostly they have to borrow from the money lenders. So in order to solve the problem, that problem, the main credit problem or the financial problem faced by the farmers, the government has established the several institutional credit to the uh, lend loans to the farmers. So that brings us to the next topic, agricultural credit. Okay, so which we will check out in my next class. Okay, so if you find this video useful, if you find this class useful, please like, share and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions or any doubts, please don't fail to mention in the comment box. Okay, so until my next video, next class, take care. Bye-bye.